Hello everyone. Before starting this chapter, let's talk about something that happened to us at some point of time. All of us have encountered the problem of pests and insects at our home, especially around the rainy seasons. We all have seen various insects like cockroaches, ants, and many other moths in our houses. Suppose one day you observe that there are many insects in your house, and you decide that you had enough. You call a pest control agency, and they send their agents to quarantine your house. After they complete the process, you observe that all the insects have disappeared, and you are extremely pleased about your decision to call the pest control. You spend some days insect-free and completely relaxed at your home. Now, after few days, when you are sitting in your room watching TV, suddenly you see some ants around you. You became perplexed as it has been just a couple of months since you had pest control at your home. You are wondering how this could happen to you. You figure out two explanations for this. One explanation is that that the pest control was not effective and no insects were killed, and you got ripped off by the pest control agency. Another explanation could be that that the pest control agency did their work well, but somehow some insects appeared. But if the pe- insects were not killed, then why did they appear after few days and not just after few hours of pest control? Actually, what happened in that period of couple of months, the insects which were not killed produced some new insects by the process of reproduction. This is only natural in species as they reproduce by one or the other way to evolve and create new species. The different organisms that live on our planet have different ways in which they reproduce and form new organism of themselves. Let's understand this in detail. Life on Earth began more than three billion years ago, and since then, eight point seven million species have been created and venturing the planet. When we have a look around ourselves, we see different species of trees, birds flying in the sky. Animals wandering on the land, different types of insects, and many more. We know when an organism is born, it grows, becomes old, and ultimately dies. No organisms live forever. Death is inevitable. So, how is that these species don't vanish, or how we don't stop seeing these birds, trees, or humans? The answer is reproduction. It is a process in which a new organism of the same species is created by the existing organism. Unlike other life processes such as nutrition, respiration, and transportation that we have studied, reproduction is not necessary for the survival of a particular organism, and also a large amount of energy is consumed in this process. But still, it is necessary as by reproduction, organisms of a particular species are created. And it is this reason that particular species of the organism does not become extinct. One more important point of reproduction is that for a species to come into notice, it is necessary that there are large number of organisms of that species. Whenever we see uh, living organisms around ourselves, like pigeons flying in the sky, labradors playing with each other in the yard of the house, or sharks wandering in the sea water. And even human beings walking around in streets and talking to each other, we observe a common pattern that there are more than one organism of a particular species. In fact, there are many in number. We know about pigeons, sharks, and labradors only because they are many in number. And if there were only one pigeon in some corner of the world, then hardly anyone would have known about it. Now, reproduction involves creation of new individuals from parent organism. In all types of reproduction, we generally see that the new organism formed, also called as offspring, is similar to the parent in many aspects. The characteristics of the parents are transferred to the offspring in the form of genes. The materials which carries the genetic information is DNA. Or deoxyribonucleic acid contained in chromosomes present in the nucleus of the cell. Now, the offspring's which are formed from the parents have DNA a bit different from the parent DNA, 
and the degree of variation depends upon the type of reproduction. It means during the process of reproduction, exact copies are not created and there is some variations. Now the question is why variation takes place and why it is necessary. Let us try to understand this. Suppose a species of bacteria lives in temperate waters, it means they are accustomed to moderate temperature of water. Now due to global warming, the temperature of the water body increases. If all the individuals of the bacteria are similar, they will not be able to tolerate the increase in temperature and will ultimately die. So due to rise in temperature, the whole species gets wiped off. But if there would have been some variations in few individuals of bacterial species and they would have become more resistant to heat, then they could have survived and the species could be safe from being becoming extinct. So this is the reason variation is necessary as adaptation of changes become easy and it is important for a species to survive. So we have seen why reproduction is needed and why variation is important. Now ad let's address a main question, how do organisms reproduce? Well, we have all seen organisms around ourselves and we know that there are many organisms on the earth. We know they are different to each other in many ways, like some organisms have only one cell while some are multicellular. Some lives in water while some lives in land. We also see that some organisms show physical movements like we can see animals running and moving around, birds flying. On the other hand, there are some organisms which do not move like plants which do not move from one place to another. In the previous chapters, we have studied that different organisms have different methods for various life processes which means they breathe differently, they eat differently and even at the cellular level, the process of obtaining energy is different. We have also seen that different organisms have different control and coordination. Similarly, for reproduction also, different organisms have different processes. There are mainly two methods of reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. The basis of categorization is that certain organisms contain reproductive cells, also called as sex cells, gametes or germ cells, while some organisms do not contain these reproductive cells. The organisms which do not contain these reproductive cells reproduce by asexual mode of reproduction and the organisms which contain these reproductive cells or the sex cells reproduce by sexual mode of reproduction. So in this video we have seen the importance of reproduction and also had a brief look on types of reproduction. In our next video we are going to see the first method of reproduction which is asexual reproduction.